Today we're going to compare browns from Daniel Smith and Sennelier, and we're going to add blues to create gray tones. Welcome to my channel. I'm Elisa. I'm a mom of three, and I'm the artist behind Elisa Laporte Art. If you would like to support me in my work, subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. In my last video, I received brown paint from Danielle Smith, and today we're going to compare with Sennelier and add blues to create gray tones. And we're going to talk about why it's important to mix our blacks and grays when painting. Raw sienna and umber, burnt sienna and umber, all have the pigment PBR7, or pigment brown iron oxide. Based on specific chemical composition and how it is processed, each manufacturer can add its own nuance to each pigment. Sennelier has been around since 1887. The paints have been produced in France the same way for more than a century. Being a honey-based watercolor, the honey adds to the longevity of the paints, giving them a brilliance and smoothness. Daniel Smith made its debut in 1993. They are made in Seattle, Washington, and are the first manufacturers to make high-performance quinacridone pigments into artist paints. Raw sienna and raw umber are both cool and lend themselves to a green or grayish tone depending on the brand. Raw sienna in its natural or raw state of iron oxide is an earthy yellow and raw umber is a natural manganese iron oxide and is more brown. Both are a one or very good on the light fastness scale and they are transparent and granulating. Here I have been adding pigment straight from the tube to see it from the darkest to the lightest value. Burnt sienna and burnt umber are both warm and lend themselves to a reddish-orange tone depending on the brand. Burnt sienna is made when the natural state of raw sienna is heated and deepens to a red-brown. It is then a calcinated natural iron oxide. The same is true for burnt umber, only it becomes a dark, rich brown and is a calcinated natural manganese iron oxide. Both are semi-transparent, granulating, and a one on the light fastness scale. Light fastness refers to whether or not your paint will fade over a hundred years. Keep in mind when painting and when selling your paintings that you want to use paints that have a light fastness of a one or a two, as these paints will have little to no fading at all. Here I am showing you how to mix grays by adding blues to your browns. On this first one, I am mixing ultramarine deep with raw sienna to create this first gray. Then I will add cobalt blue also to raw sienna to create the second gray. I am now mixing cerulean blue with raw sienna from Sennelier to put in the third box. Here I am mixing raw sienna from Daniel Smith with ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and cerulean blue to compare the differences with Sennelier brand. It is important to learn how to mix your own blacks and grays and not rely on using the two blacks and grays. I myself do not own or use two black, but I do have a Payne's gray which I have used on occasion in workshops or to mix with other colors. Black is the absence of color and absorbs it. 
Therefore, if used in your paintings for shadows, hair, trees, etc., it will feel unnatural like there is a hole in your painting. Notice the differences in the grays and how you can use them in your paintings. These are pure and non-muddied tones. If you do use straight black or gray, be aware that they can feel more muddy. Most of your grays will have more than one pigment, which can cause that muddy feel. Mixing your own adds more life and feels natural. If you do use a too black or gray, mix in a bit of red or blue to bring some life to your pigment. Moving on, we are now mixing raw umber with our different blues. You will notice that these grays are much darker than the previous grays using raw sienna. That is because of the darker brown tones within the pigment. Another nuance you might notice within these grays is when using cerulean blue, my pigments or my grays tend to lean towards the green side. This cerulean blue is actually one of the few opaque watercolors that I own. I believe this opacity is partially why it tends to lean towards that green tone and it cannot neutralize like the other grays. To mix gray, you need to neutralize your colors, which is a process of taking two pigments and mixing them together so neither of the two colors are present. In this case, you would have neither brown nor blue showing up in your grays. I'm now starting to mix my blues with burnt sienna. Of all the grays that I mixed today, these ones are actually my favorite. This first one is Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Deep. The second one is Burnt Sienna and Cobalt Blue, which is my favorite because of how velvety it feels. It is the perfect color to use when you want to create a painting that has a misty feel or rainy dark clouds. Pay attention to when I use the Cerulean Blue with both Burnt Siennas and Burnt Umbers. You will notice that the gray tends to be less green and more blue, you will see that the colors are actually a separation granulation, which means that you will see both the brown and the blue, and the blue will appear granulated in the brown. For your convenience, you will be able to see these swatches better on my blog. The link will be in the description below. Here I will show you how my two Payne's Gray looks in comparison with the grays that I mixed. I'm going to first show you the Payne's Gray straight out of the tube, and then I will mix it with Alizarin Crimson, and then Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Sienna. Here I'm mixing Payne's Gray with raw umber, and then I will mix it with raw sienna. For me, these colors have a feeling of being more flat. Here we have Sennelier's raw sienna. On the front here, you are able to see the series number one, and that it is 21 mil or 0.7 ounces. If you look on the back, you can see where it says also series number and that it is transparent and the pigment is PBR7. Then you can check lower to see the light fastness. Here it is a one. And again, you're able to see the ounces and the milliliters. Over here, we have Daniel Smith's Burnt Umber. 
On the left side of the tube, you can see PBR7. If you turn it over to the other side, you're able to see that it is a Series 1 and the light fastness. This will help you when searching for the best quality paints. On the front of the tube, you can see that it is a 15 mil or 0.5 full ounces. Here I have Payne's Gray. Again, on the front you can see the series number, and on the back you can see it is transparent opaque, and it has three different pigments. Those three pigments are PB19, PB15.1, and PBK7. It also has a light fastness of one. Transparent opaque means it is still transparent but has some opacity to the paint. Now I will show you Cerulean Blue. If you look on the back, you'll see that it is a Series 4 and is opaque and has a light fastness of 1. Series 4 means that the pigments are harder to find and therefore it is much more expensive. I hope this information was valuable. Check out my blog if you would like to see a high resolution pic of my color swatches linked in the description below. Question of the day. What is your favorite brown and watercolor? What is the name and the brand? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you know when I post a tutorial painting using these browns and grays. And until then, keep on painting.